Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 5 of our replay with Sherman Leader, the 2017 game from Danvers and Games. We're in the middle of our second battle of our first week and we are really up against things now. One of our Shermans has got its treads blown off, we've lost one of our anti-tank teams already, we've still got a lot of German power to take out in this infantry battalion. Let's jump right in and continue the action with turn 3. Just a brief overview of the battle as we start into turn three. Our forces have moved into the west side of the town here and holed up and pretty much taken out all of the German forces near us, except for this one armored car. The rest of the German forces are concentrated here in the northwest part of the map. Of particular note are these dangerous mortars that are sitting up in the Bocage. Now, a big factor in what happens next is how aggressive the Germans move in this next turn. There's a 50% chance they'll move forward aggressively given their, their tendencies. And if they do, they're going to bring their forces into range of our forces. If they sit back, however, the impetus is going to be on us to move forward. And that's tough to do with infantry units because moving forward and attacking in the same turn with infantry just doesn't work very well with our inexperienced commanders. So we're hopeful that Germans are going to go on the offensive. We're hopeful we can start taking out more damage. We've got a lot of work to do to destroy this battalion and only four, turn, four turns left to do it. So with no options for us to move before the Germans left, we'll start this turn with the German tactical movement. This might be the biggest role of the game for us. We're hoping for a five or better. A nine! That's fantastic! That means most all of the enemy units are going to move out of cover, including the mortars in the northwest part of the map. This is a very fortunate role for us and starts things off very positive note in this episode. We have a few easy moves to make, but basically this aggressive movement means that everything is going to come towards us. There's going to be a lot of attacks. I'm hopeful we can survive these. If we can, we should have a lot of targets to take out, which is good, but we've got to survive this initial wave of the German attack here. First up, these rifle units on the right-hand side, their orders are to explode, uh, advance to high explosive targets, which are basically our infantry units on the, the west here. They're going to take the path that keeps them the safest and the highest cover, so that means moving into the city here. They are not in range yet, however, so all three of these units move forward and their turns end. Next up, likewise, these two rifles, this is the new rifle unit that just appeared. It ended up appearing in the Bocage up here. This also has a high explosive advance order, so it's going to move forward, but it's got no targets. This rifle unit will move forward, it's got no targets. So we've got the rifle units all taken care of. Let's take a look next at some of the German armor. This armored car has orders to move towards our nearest armored unit, so it will cut into the highest defense terrain to do that. It's still out of range, so that one's taken care of. And now it looks like everything else that's going to move is going to be attacking our units. So get ready, here come the fireworks. All right, next up, let's move this German half-track. It's got orders for high explosive advance, which means it can go either here or here. We're going to move it here so that uh, Sergeant Custard can do something and attack it in his turn. Now, <clears throat> this brings up an interesting point that Peter Oakley brought up on Board Game Geek as a comment on one of the videos. He said, Is it, uh, isn't it a bit unfair to, to make a move like this, where it's to the, our advantage to move the unit one way or the other when we have an option to do that? And the rules are clear. They say you decide as a player what you want to have the unit to do. And to me, that seems almost like a little bit of a difficult uh, a difficulty adjuster, if you would. You could really handle it three ways, right? You could have it move to our advantage, which we're doing in this game. You could have it move to the German advantage, which would be here, so it doesn't get fired on by the Sherman. Or you could do some kind of a random die roll. It does seem to come up, having played this now, this is a third scenario, it does seem to come up often enough that I do, I do think it probably shifts the difficulty a little bit in our favor. I'm finding the game challenging enough right now, and at some point I might move it to some kind of a random number or actually do whatever would be to the, mo the greatest advantage of the Germans. But for right now, we're playing it that way just for kind of, just for fun. So with a half track here, that also brings up a second point about Sergeant Custard Sherman. This was a mistake we made. This anti-tank unit, which we subsequently destroyed, had a range of one, and yet we had it fire on Sergeant Custard and his Sherman at a range of two, and it knocked the suspension off. Thomas Kunksel po uh, pointed that out in his comment on the video. 
And unfortunately, I think it's something that's going to be a little bit difficult to unwind. He suggested maybe just removing the suspension damage and just having the, the Custard's uh, Sherman be able to move forward from now on. But instead of attacking some other unit, the unit attacked the Sherman. So we would really have to go back and figure out what that unit was. And that unit has subsequently gone on to kill other units. So my general rule with kind of mistakes that happen early on is we're just going to play on and understand that over time, they're probably all going to wash out and evil equal out. However, I do think over the course of these first few episodes, the mistakes we've made have actually favored the Germans a lot more than they've favored us. And this is another case where that's definitely true. Getting back on track, let's have this half-track attack. Its factors mean it's going to, everything, all the targets are the same chance to hit. So it's going to attack the one with the lowest overall defense, which unfortunately is Sergeant Hart and his mortar team in the Bocage here. Their chances to hit are fives but they have moved so they have a minus two penalty meaning that they need sevens or greater to hit five and a ten one hits sergeant hart's mortar team has a defense of two to negate the hit it needs a three or less three excellent work that would have been expensive to lose a sergeant hart's mortar team so i'm glad there was no damage there Next up, let's do this German anti-tank team. It's going to move down the same place because it got its orders for AP advance, and then it's going to attack our jumbo in this hex here. Anti-tank team has an attack factor of three against armored targets. It's moved so it needs fours or greater to hit. Seven and a two, one hit. Jumbo has a defense of four. It needs a four or less to negate it. A three. Excellent, the die roll gods are favoring us early in this one. We've had some good luck so far. We have a couple more easy moves to make here that I didn't realize at the time. First of all, the mortars have orders to advance if cannot attack, so they will advance forward to these squares here. However, mortars can't move and attack on the same turn. So they are both in range now of our mortar unit, of Sergeant Hart mortar unit, as well as all these infantry units, but they won't be able to attack until next turn. Likewise, these anti-tank guns have orders to AP advance, which means to advance to our armored unit here. They will move forward into this town. However, anti-tank guns can also not move and attack on the same turn. So we'll get a chance to, to mess them all up here, but uh, to knock them out uh, before they get a chance to fire. Next up, the half-track will advance to our nearest infantry unit. That will bring it forward into this city here, and it will attack Sergeant Sanders and his rifle team. The half-track needs sevens or better to hit. Five and a six. Nice. Two misses. The armored car has orders to move to our nearest armored unit, so it's going to actually advance into the same hex here, and it's going to attack Sergeant Myers and his jumbo. Armored car needs sixes or better to attack normally because it's moved and attacked, but because it's in the same square, it gets that back, so it needs fives or better to hit. Oh, double nines, two hits. Uh-oh. Sergeant Myers with his jumbo is in heavy terrain, so needs fives or less to negate them. Five and a three. Oops, that's off, but you can see it. It's a three. Uh, we've been extremely lucky here. No attacks have been successful against us in this turn. And now with that, that's the end of the German turn. It's a time for us to see if we can do some damage. Lots of things for us to consider here, but our, I think our priority has to be these anti-tank guns and this anti-tank team. And we can have our infantry units fire on those. Then, might be good to have uh, Sergeant Hart try to start taking out these mortars if we have a little bit of free space. Uh, Sergeant Custard Sherman can pick up one of these two targets here and then probably have our jumbo try to take out the armored car that's attacked too. So, lots to do, let's get busy. Let's start out with Sergeant Zebra's Elite Strike Force machine gun team trying to take out one of these two anti-tank guns. Sergeant Zebra's force has a high explosive attack of one, so it can't miss at this range because of modifiers. A seven and a four, so both shots hit. The anti-tank gun is a two, but it's in high terrain, so it needs fours or less to survive. Let's hope we get lucky and get this off to a turn to a good start. A three and a seven, yes, excellent. We knock out the anti-tank gun. One unit down. Next up, let's have Sergeant Wagner's experienced rifle team try to take out this other anti-tank gun. I, I screwed up the recording and half rolled one die, so we got a one on that, which was a miss. Sergeant Wagner needs a four or better on the second roll to get the hit. Ten. Excellent. That's a hit. For the damage, the anti-tank gun needs to roll a four or less to survive. Let's get a five or better and take this one out. One. Ah. 
So close. Let's have Sergeant Moore's rifle team try the same attack against that anti-tank gun. It needs fives or better. However, Sergeant Moore has a minus one modifier, so six or better to hit. Seven and a four. We get one hit. Once again, the anti-tank gun needs a four or less to survive. Five or greater to be destroyed. Four. Gah! Gotta take this one out. Turn started off so promising. Let's try Sergeant Sanders to take it out again. Sergeant Sanders needs fives or better to hit this. Five and a ten. Excellent. Two hits. Fours are less to survive. Fives are greater to take it out. We just need one good roll. A two and a one. Are you kidding me? We've rolled four consecutive times at 50% odds or better, and we didn't hit. Ah, the anti-tank gun survives. Three of our units have attacked to no avail. Let's see if our jumbo can take out this armored car. Now, because it's in the same square, we actually get three dice rolls on this. Its attack is a six, but because it's in the same hex, it goes down to minus, it goes down, we need fives or better, and Sergeant Myers add ones to the die roll, so fours are better on two shots. Three and a seven, we get one hit. Armored car needs fours or less to survive. A three. Ah! Dice roll gods, what have I done to offend you? This is horrible. Let's do some of our ranged attacks. We're going to have uh, Sergeant Hart and his mortar team, who have yet to have any success in this battle yet, try to take out one of these mortars advancing through the field. They need... Fours are better to hit, but because of its long range, we add, we subtract two. They need sixes or better to hit. However, Sergeant Hart supposedly is a good shot, so he needs fives or better to hit two shots on the mortar team. Ten and a seven. Finally, Sergeant Hart dials in on something. Now, the mortar needs twos or less to survive on both of these rolls. A ten and an eight. We have knocked out the first mortar unit. That's good. Even though that one is somewhat of a lesser threat, I wanted to try to take these out because I'm afraid they might retreat with subsequent orders, so this is an opportunity to catch them in the open. Our last attack for the turn will be Sergeant Custard with his derailed Sherman. We're going to have them shoot at the half-track. Honestly, the anti-tank unit is the greater threat to this um, jumbo tank here, but we can ha we'll have a lot of infantry units next turn to try to take those out. We have three armored targets, so I think it's going to be better to use the Sherman to try to take out the half-track. So, Sergeant Custard needs a six to hit. However, he's a good shot, so we add one to the die roll, meaning fives. However, the range makes it back to six. Six is and above to hit the half-track. A ten and a three. We get one hit. The half-track has a defense of two in high terrain. It needs a four or less to survive. This would redeem our turn if we can pick this one up. Five! Yes! Excellent! Sergeant Custard gets his first kill and disables the half-track coming in on us. And with that, we are at the end of our turn. Everyone has attacked. Let's go on to turn four. One last thing I realized before we move on to turn four, I didn't make the third attack for the jumbo against the armored car. So we get one more chance there. We need a four or better to hit. Seven. We get a hit. The armored car needs a four or less to survive. Three. Ah, oh, it survives again. Oh, this... Okay. Such is life. We will drive on. So as we jump into turn four, once more, we've got a critical turn. The German battalion, by the way, has 17 strength points left. For us to reduce it to half strength, we have to get it to 13 points or less. So we are getting close to that mark. However, Perhaps of more critical importance is what happens with the German move this turn. Because if the German units move forward aggressively into these squares, our units could be quickly over outnumbered. So once again, this die roll for German movement could be a very important factor to see how this whole scenario turns out. We got lucky last turn because we needed units to come to us, but we didn't really knock out enough of them. If the same thing happens this turn, this could be really disastrous for us. Let's jump in and see how turn four gets going. Let's roll for the German movement for this turn. We're hoping for something a little bit lower. Six. That's medium aggressive for us. We might be okay there. Advance if cannot attack for armored units and anti-tank units. Advance to cover for rifle, half-track, and machine guns. And then cautious advance for anti-tank gun, mortars, and trucks. So let's see how that impacts the turn and let's dig in. Let's start with our German mortar unit. Its orders are cautious advance, which means it advances if it cannot be attacked in the hex it advances to. 
However, it can be attacked in this hex should it advance. So the mortar will stay where it is. The weakest defense unit that it can fire on is our mortar team. So we're gonna have a mortar versus mortar battle. The mortar needs sixes or better to hit against soft targets. However, firing at range, it, it subtracts two from the dice roll. So we need eights or better to hit for the mortar team on Sergeant Hart's mortars. An eight and a six, so we get one hit. Sergeant Hart's defense is a two. In Bocage, it's a three. It needs a three or less to mitigate the damage. A one, excellent. So the mortar team is done for its move. Sergeant Hart survives. This rifle unit up by the mortar is one of the only German units that will not attack in this turn, just looking at how things are gonna work out. Its orders are advanced to cover. That's a simple move, it's gonna move here. Nothing is in range, so its turn is complete. All the other units look like they're going to both move and attack, or just basically attack. Let's get busy resolving these. We're gonna be taking a lot of fire. Next up, let's move the armored car over here. Its actions are advanced. If, can, if it cannot attack, it cannot attack from here. So it will move forward. We're gonna have it move down into this building here. And its best shot is at the jumbo. So it will try to take on the jumbo. Now its attack against armor is a five, but because it's moved, it suffers a one penalty. So it needs sixes or above to hit on two shots. A 10 and a one. So it gets one hit. Sergeant uh, Myers Jumbo has a defense of three in high terrain. It's a five or less to negate it. A six, the hit goes through. Uh-oh, we need to pull a damage chit for the Jumbo. We have not had the best luck with pulling damage chits here. Let's hope the gods are with us this time. One stress, not too bad. Sergeant Meyer picks up a little stress as an armored round clanks off the Jumbo. All right, next up, let's work on these rifle units here. Now they have an option to go either left to the right for them or to the left for them. We're going to move them, two of them to the right here. When they move this way, now their choice of attack is one of these infantry units in here. Our lowest one, however, is, we're gonna pick on uh, Sergeant Sanders and his rifle team. So the rifle unit will attack there. They need fives to hit. And normally, however, because they have moved, they're minus two, they need sevens or greater to hit. Five and a five, two misses, excellent. Let's do the next rifle unit, same thing. Moves forward, needs sevens or greater to hit, two shots on Sergeant Sanders. Two and a nine, gets one hit. Sanders' defense is a three, it needs a five or less to negate it because it's in high terrain. Ten, uh-oh, more damage, first damage for Sergeant Sanders. We have yet to have a no effect, and there are some in here. Hopefully we can get one now. Exposed. Exposed means that it's greater chance that this unit can get hit in subsequent turns, but it doesn't impact things for this turn. The last rifle unit from up here is going to move southeast instead. That will give us a chance to shoot at it with Sergeant Custard Sherman should he have uh, be able to take out these other units first. It's going to go after, however, the, the least defensive target is Sergeant Hart's mortar team. The rifle squad needs sevens or above on two rolls. Seven and a six, it gets one hit. In the Bocage, Sergeant Hart's mortar team needs a three or less to negate the hit. One, excellent. Sergeant Hart is having some luck, not hitting, having some bad luck, not hitting things, but having some pretty good luck on the defensive end, keeping his unit safe from harm. Next up, this rifle team north of the city will move into the city. It's going to attack Sergeant Sanders' rifle team. Normally it needs a five, but because it's moved, it needs sevens or greater to hit. Two shots. An eight and a one. One shot gets through. Sergeant Sanders needs a five or less to negate it. Seven. Shot gets through. Sergeant Sanders takes damage. Already exposed from the last time. Nice. We got lucky finally. No effect. Sergeant Sanders isn't out of the fire yet though. This rifle team, our last one, will move up. Same attack on Sergeant Sanders. It needs sevens or better to hit. Four and a three, excellent. Two misses for us. Our half track moves forward with orders on advance to cover. So it's going to advance to the nearest unit. And once again, Sergeant Sanders unit will come under fire. The half track needs, normally needs fives. Because it's moved, it needs sevens. However, it's in the same hex, so it needs fives or greater to hit. Seven and a three, one hit. Sergeant Sanders needs a five or less to negate it. Three, yes, three consecutive fire shots where we've had some really good luck. 
Now comes the most dangerous part, however. The Germans have three units left that will all target armor-piercing targets, which will be this uh, our M4 Jumbo and Sergeant Myers. First up, we'll fire with the anti-tank team. They need threes or greater to hit. A three, and that's halfway. A one, did it, oh, what do I do? I'm gonna roll it again, I said it was halfway, sorry. A five, ugh, two hits. The Jumbo's in the, in the city, it needs fives or less to negate them. Fives on two fives, ooh! Close call for Sergeant Myers and his Jumbo, but both, both shots from the anti-tank team ricochet off the tank to no effect. Next up, the armored car that's in the same hex here at close quarters firing at the Jumbo. Normally it's a five, but because it's in the same hex, fours are above and hit. Yes, double threes. <laughs> Our luck has continued in this turn. We need the luck to hold up one more time. The anti-tank gun will fire on the Jumbo. It needs threes or better to hit. A five and a two. Considering the odds, we'll take one hit there. Sergeant, uh, Myers needs a five or less to negate the hit. Another three. <laughs> oh, wow, I thought for sure we were in serious trouble on this turn. I mean, to come through that with as little damage as we have, that was remarkably lucky. I thought for sure we were going to have some serious damage on the, on the jumbo, considering they had the anti-tank team had three good shots, two good shots. The anti-tank gun had two good shots, and the armored car had two good shots. That's six shots, and we didn't have to pull a damage chit. That's just really good luck for us on that one. And with that, the German turn ends. It's our turn to see if we can do some damage. Let's start out with uh, Sergeant Zebra's elite team here. The machine gunners are going to try to take out this anti-tank gun. It needs ones or better to hit, which is an automatic hit for us. Three and a three and an eight hits. The anti-tank gun needs fours or better, fours or less to survive on both of these. God, two and a two. Uh, I was hopeful for a good start to this turn. We're gonna change things up a little bit here with Sergeant Wagner's rifle team. We're gonna go after the half track because we get that extra attack when the unit's in the same square, and we get plus two to our die roll. So instead of a seven, Wag Sergeant Wagner's team needs fives or better to hit, and they get three attacks. Seven and a five, that's two hits. And a one, two hits. The half track needs fours or less to survive. Seven and a 10, we take the half track out. Nice work, Sergeant Wagner. Ah, finally, we got a kill here. Let's see if Sergeant Moore's squad, the 901st, can take out the anti-tank gun. And thinking just a moment here, we should have had Wagner fire in the armored car. That was a mistake. But let's have the rifle team against the anti-tank gun. Need fives or greater to hit. Seven and a one. We get one hit. Four or less negates it. Five or greater and we've knocked it out. Eight. Yes. Nice work, Sergeant Moore. Anti-tank gun is knocked out. That's a big thorn off our side. Let's have Sergeant Myers in his jumbo try to take out the armored car in the same square. Normally it's a six. However, because they are in the same square, they need fives or greater to hit. And Sergeant Myers is a good shot. So fours are greater to hit and we get three attacks. Seven and a one. We got one hit. And a six. Two hits. The armored car needs fours or less to negate. Fives are greater and we've taken it out. Four and a seven. Yes, we've got it. Nice work, Sergeant Myers. Armored car goes down. We're racking up some kills this turn. Moving our view to the south, we're going to have Sergeant Custard and his Sherman try to take out the anti-tank gun. I think this is a greater threat than the armored car, considering that the anti-tank gun is going to be able to fire on our jumbo. Sergeant Custard normally needs sixes, minus one at range, but Custard's a good shot, so back up to sixes or greater. Two shots to hit. Eight and a seven. Nice shot, Sergeant Custard. Two hits on the anti-tank team. They need fours or less to survive. Fives and above, and we've wiped it out. Six and a one, nice. This is a good turn for us. Boy, I feel like we got really lucky. I mean, we negated a lot of hits on us and we're able to pay back with some really good shooting. So we have left, two units left. We're gonna have Sergeant Hart and his mortar team try to take out this last German mortar at the top of the screen, the top of the field there, still in the open. They need fours to hit normally at range, then they're gonna need sixes to hit. Hart's a good shot, however, fives and better to hit. Be great if we could take this mortar out. A nine and a three. We get one hit. The mortar is in open terrain, so it needs a two or less to survive. Threes and above, and we've taken it out. A four, yes. 
Nice. Sergeant Hart's recovering from earlier difficulties with some rough shooting to pick up two consecutive kills. What a good turn. We've still got one unit left to move. Rather than having Sergeant Sander, Saunders, uh, Sanders' rifle team attack, we're going to actually have them move forward up into this square here. And the reason is they've got that exposed marker on their squad, which means that next turn, every one of these units that fires on it would be targeting them because it's the easiest unit to hit and destroy. So they're going to be taking probably four or five shots, maybe more, at 20% better chance to hit. So I think it's worth moving them to remove the exposed marker on the counter. So that's what we're going to do. And with that, that is our last move for the turn. Everything has fired or moved. We've completed turn four. It's time to move on to turn five. And as we're closing in on 30 minutes, we're going to stop here and continue on in our next episode with the conclusion of this battle. But that turn four was, uh, and, I mean, no doubt about it, that was just incredibly lucky for us. I think we had five kills out of six shots, which is just remarkable. And that has taken their platoon down to a strength of eight at the moment. We'll add one in, making it a nine. So it's reduced to half strength, which means it could be a little bit less aggressive in its movement. And we have to get it down to four in order to wipe to five uh, points in order to wipe it out. So if we take out the armored car and two rifle units in the next turn, we've officially wiped out the battalion. So we have two turns to take off four more points. That was a big turn for us. Anyway, let, us, uh, let me know how you think we're doing in the comments. Great work, everybody. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode where we'll have the conclusion of this battle. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of the week.